What is going on guys? NFL players bring a lot of hatred upon themselves for various reasons. Dirty plays, suspensions, cheating scandals, criminal acts off the field, attitude problems, and so on. But there's that one player who stands out for each of the league's 32 teams as the most hated in their club's history. Instead of simply looking at the most hated player on every team, we thought we'd rank them from the least despised to the most despised. So let's dive into the results. Make sure to subscribe to TPS and put on your notifications. We post videos all the time. New videos all the time. Subscribe. All right, let's start with a former three-time MVP. Number 32, Brett Favre, Green Bay Packers. Favre wasn't exactly the easiest guy to hate, but he did rub some people the wrong way. For starters, he dominated his NFC North foes in the Detroit Lions and Chicago Bears for years. So those respective fan bases really couldn't stand the guy. Favre also had an embarrassing sexting scandal while he was with the Jets in 2010. And so many fans got sick and tired of his back and forth retirement decisions over the final five years of his career. But overall, Favre wasn't exactly a bad guy. Certainly, you can't hate him as much as the other 31 guys on our list. Number 31, Brian Bosworth, Seattle Seahawks. Lots of fans in Seattle simply disliked Bosworth because of the fact he was nothing more than a major draft bust. He won a national title with the Oklahoma Sooners in 1985, and he was a Heisman Trophy finalist in 1986. The Seahawks drafted Bosworth in the 1987 supplemental draft, but he was forced to retire after three years due to a nagging shoulder injury. It's not necessarily his fault that he was a draft bust. I mean, he got injured and that just happens. But Bosworth also once threatened to take down Denver Broncos QB John Elway, being quoted as saying he'd rather get penalized for a late hit than Elway run out of bounds unscathed. Denver fans then wore Ban the Boz t-shirts, but Bosworth got him good. His own company actually produced those shirts. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> Damn, that's actually hilarious. Number 30, Justin Blackman, Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars drafted Blackman fifth overall in 2012, but he unfortunately never lived up to the expectations due to numerous off-the-field arrests. Blackman became largely disliked across the NFL, and this included some of his very own Jaguar supporters. But Blackman simply isn't as hated as other players, because a lot of people actually feel sorry for him and just hope he finds happiness. Number 29, Chad Ochocinco, Cincinnati Bengals. Some of the greatest wide receivers in NFL history also carry attitude problems. It's not really a big surprise for Ochocinco, who is a six-time Pro Bowler. Ochocinco's excessive celebrations and arrogant attitude led him to becoming strongly disliked outside of Cincinnati. And while he was with the Patriots, Ocho Cinco seemed more interested in Twitter than actually learning the playbook. So really, what do you expect? Number 28, Jim McMahon, Chicago Bears. Now McMahon may have been a 1985 Pro Bowler and a Super Bowl champion with the Chicago Bears, but the man was largely disliked throughout his career. McMahon held a beer during a public event after the Bears drafted him in 1982, much to the disgust of Bears coaches and ownership. McMahon also broke league rules by wearing an Adidas head band during a game, even though he wasn't authorized to wear the company's merchandise at the time. After being fined by Commissioner Pete Rozelle, McMahon continued his obnoxious ways by wearing a headband that read, Rozelle. This arrogance of McMahon's led to him having plenty of enemies throughout his career. Number 27, Brian Cushing, Houston Texans. He spent his entire career with Houston, which spanned from 2009 to 17. He was a pro bowler in his first NFL season, while taking home Defensive Rookie of the Year honors. But he was also a cheater, if you will. Throughout his career, he earned multiple suspensions for violating the NFL's performance enhancing substance policy. An anonymous GM also said that after doing some research on him, they knew he was a steroid user. Nobody likes a cheater. Don't do steroids, kids. It's not going to work in your favor. Number 26, Josh Norman, Washington Redskins. Amid a 2015 Pro Bowl season in Carolina, Norman became quite disliked for his well-known clash with Giants wideout Odell Beckham Jr. The two exchanged harsh words and punches during their Week 15 showdown. Norman then joined the Redskins in 2016, and his popularity has continued to decline there. He's continued to run his mouth, complained about Washington fans booing, and he's been benched for his struggles in DC. It all adds up to Norman being the most disliked player in Washington Redskins history. Number 25, Jonathan Vilma, New Orleans Saints. The three-time Pro Bowl linebacker played a huge role in helping the Saints win Super Bowl 44. However, Vilma drew a ton of hatred after it was revealed that he played a huge role in the Saints' infamous Bounty Gate scandal. It was reported that Vilma offered teammates $10,000 to injure Brett Favre in the 2000 NFC Championship game. Vilma was initially suspended for the entire 2012 season, but he was able to get it reduced. Some New Orleans fans can no longer view this guy as a franchise great, and many outside of Louisiana will never respect Vilma again. Number 24, Brian Cox, Miami Dolphins. Cox was a three-time Pro Bowler who earned a trio of All-Pro selections throughout his career. He 
also won a Super Bowl 36 championship with the Miami Dolphins. However, Cox was known for his big mouth and big temper during his playing days in Miami. Cox was vocal about how much he hated the Buffalo Bills, as well as the city and the organization. He was even fined for flipping off the fans during a game. Cox claimed that he was the victim of racist comments from Bills fans. Another occasion saw him spit towards Buffalo supporters after he was thrown out of a game. Damn, it's crazy. Number 23, Mike Vanderjagt, Indianapolis Colts. He was among the top kickers in the CFL, so he opted to make the jump to the NFL. He joined the Indianapolis Colts in 98 and became a Pro Bowl kicker. However, he was strongly disliked by many of his peers and fans in Indy. He missed some big kicks, including a 46-yarder in the 2005 AFC Divisional Round against Pittsburgh that ended the Colts season. Manning called him an idiot kicker in an interview while suggesting he was liquored up after the latter ranted about his quarterback and head coach Tony Dungy. After his career, he became a coach at a school in Marco Island, Florida. He was investigated for grabbing a student by the throat, leading to a suspension. Oh, isn't that just a happy ending? Number 22, Andre Waters, Philadelphia Eagles. The former Eagles safety was so dirty that he forced the NFL to adopt a rule change. In 1988, Waters dished out a dirty hit to Ram signal caller Jim Everett. So the league added a rule that banned players from hitting a QB below the waist. Waters was such a dirty and vicious player that folks started calling him Dirty Waters. It's kind of clever, actually. Let's not forget that time he tried to take out Rich Gannon's knees as well. Number 21, Keyshawn Johnson, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Johnson was a three-time Pro Bowl wideout who won a Super Bowl 37 championship with the Buccaneers. But his accomplishments were often overshadowed by Johnson's selfish behavior. Johnson wrote a book called Just Give Me the Damn Ball. So uh, yeah, there's that for starters. Wow, how arrogant do you have to be? Damn. Even though Johnson did great things with John Gruden, the star wideout kept feuding with his head coach. Tampa had to deactivate him in the midst of the 2003 season, and Johnson was traded to the Cowboys in the offseason. People just don't care for guys that put themselves before the team. Number 20, Mark Gassineau, New York Jets. One of the game's all-time greatest pass rushers. Gassineau twice led the league in sacks, and he earned five All-Pro selections. Part of the New York Sack Exchange, Gassineau made plenty of enemies due to his over-the-top celebrations when he recorded sacks. The NFL introduced an unsportsmanlike taunting penalty in order to crack down on Gassineau celebrations, as it led to major feuds with his opponents. Gassineau also took a careless roughing the passer penalty that cost the Jets in their 1986 divisional playoff game against Cleveland. So that led him to being hated, even by some of his own fans. Number 19, Rodney Harrison, Los Angeles, San Diego Chargers. The hard-hitting safety was a key in helping the Chargers reach Super Bowl 29 in the 1994 season. Harrison, of course, later won two Super Bowl championships with the Patriots. As great as he was, however, Harrison was largely disliked liked outside of San Diego and New England. He was twice voted as the NFL's dirtiest players in player polls conducted by Sports Illustrated. Nobody can forget his cheap headshot on Jerry Rice during the 2002 season, his last with the Chargers. His many haters sure got the last laugh when David Tyree made the legendary helmet grab with Harrison on him in Super Bowl 42. Number 18, Terrell Owens, San Francisco 49ers. As great of a wide receiver as he was, it's no secret that T.O. almost kept himself out of Canton because of his behavior and antics. Wherever he went, Owens seemed to draw more enemies. Let's be real, he was always a me first player. His excessive TD celebrations enraged a lot of people too. And his ugly departures from San Francisco and Philadelphia can't be ignored. Thing is, Owens just didn't care if you hated him. So that kind of made you hate him even more. Number 17, Randy Moss, Minnesota Vikings. Like T.O., Moss was one of football's greatest wide receivers who was rightfully enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But Moss also had a cocky me first attitude that brought a lot of enemies towards him. While with the Vikings in 2002, Moss was also arrested for bumping a traffic officer with his vehicle when she tried to stop him from making an illegal turn. Moss infamously walked off the field before many attempted an onside kick in week 17 of the 2004 season against the Washington Redskins. He quit on his team. The guy also drew heat especially from Joe Buck when he mooned Lambeau Field during a playoff game one week later. Pretty easy to see why so many people couldn't stand the guy. Number 16, Lawrence Taylor, New York Giants. He's by far the greatest defensive player in NFL history. LT was a 10-time Pro Bowler, a 9-time First Team All-Pro, and 3-time Defensive Player of the Year who led the G-Men to a pair of Super Bowls. But Taylor was largely unpopular outside of New York because of his off-the-field problems. He had well-documented problems with drugs, which led to various suspensions. A contract holdout in 1990 didn't help his image either. And after his playing career, Taylor would be arrested numerous times. This included a domestic violence arrest in 2016, and he was accused of giving money to an underage girl to take part in sexual intercourse with him. All of these issues have painted a terrible image of one of football's most dominant players. Number 15, Indominus Sue, Detroit Lions. Sue 
stands a good chance at making it to the Hall of Fame if he stops misbehaving for the remainder of his career. One of the dirtiest players of his era. Sue received a two-game suspension when he stomped on the arm of Evan Dietrich Smith during a Thanksgiving game in 2011. A year later, he kicked Matt Schaub in the groin. And in 2014, Sue stepped on the calf of Packer signal caller Aaron Rodgers. He was suspended for one game, but had it dropped after appealing. Uh, I don't really need to go on. I'm sure you kind of make your own determination here. Yeah. Number 14, Ray Lewis, Baltimore Ravens. Now, Lewis was definitely polarizing. We all know it. Obviously, the guy was a legend in Baltimore. Can't deny that. He was the face of the franchise for 17 years, leading them to a pair of Super Bowl championships in his illustrious career. But Lewis' reputation took a hit when he and two friends were indicted for the murders of Richard Lawler and Jacinth Baker, who had engaged in a fight with Lewis' party. Lewis reached a guilty plea and was in charge with murder. His two friends were acquitted, and Lewis later reached settlements with both victims' families. Few know what really happened that night, but the fact that Lewis was linked to such a brutal crime tarnished his reputation, and it made him one of football's most hated players for the rest of his career. Number 13, Larry Johnson, Kansas City Chiefs. He was a two-time Pro Bowl running back and a beloved superstar in Kansas City. Many fans ignored Johnson's off-the-field issues uh, since he was giving their football team a chance to win. But after a while, Chiefs fans had enough. Johnson was suspended as he continued to break team rules. And in 2009, he landed in hot water after making disturbing homophobic comments. KC started a petition for the team to cut him loose, and Johnson was waived in November of that year. Johnson has also been arrested numerous times for domestic violence, further damaging his reputation. The Chiefs organization has wisely distanced themselves from Johnson because he became the ultimate disgrace. Number 12, Ben Roethlisberger, Pittsburgh Steelers. He may be headed to the Hall of Fame one day, but Roethlisberger carries a complicated legacy. He's one of the all-time greatest players for the historic Steelers franchise, sure. But Roethlisberger has also been accused of sexual assault numerous times, which led to a four-game suspension in 2010. Those allegations alone have made Roethlisberger one of the most hated players in all of football. Not only that, but many fans, pundits, and former teammates hate how the Steelers organization gave Ben a free pass for calling out teammates like Antonio Brown while facing no repercussions whatsoever. I guess the longer you're there, the more seniority and power you get. A lot of damage has been done to Roethlisberger's character, and there's simply no way it can be repaired. Number 11, Des Bryant, Dallas Cowboys. He was a three-time Pro Bowl wideout for the Cowboys, but Bryant made a lot of enemies due to his major temper and occasional sideline outbursts. Bryant was also testy with the media, angrily berating a reporter in an expletive-filled rant in 2015. The guy fought numerous times during games as well, and in the 2012 offseason. Bryant was arrested for brutally attacking his own mother. That cemented his legacy as a world-class jerk, and it was hard for fans to ever really respect Bryant again. Number 10, Albert Hainsworth, Tennessee Titans. During a 2006 game between Hainsworth's Titans and the Dallas Cowboys, the Pro Bowl defensive tackle committed one of the dirtiest and ugliest on-field actions in NFL history. Hainsworth was fined for a vicious slam on Maurice Jones-Drew. And of course, his disastrous tenure in Washington made Hainsworth even more unpopular across the football world. Number nine, Tom Brady, New England Patriots. He's the GOAT, he's the GOAT, he's the GOAT, he's the GOAT, okay? All you Patriots people, he's the GOAT. Let's start with that. Thing is, Tom Brady is far from a bad guy off the field, but people just hate greatness. Except the people who hate Brady will actually argue against his greatness. Now, I don't hate him, I respect him. Brady has owned pretty much every NFL team throughout his career, no denying that. But people hate the guy for other reasons. His hot temper, his long history of being bailed out by the refs, the tuck rule, and allegations that he participated in the deflate gate scandal. And of course, many Patriots haters get sickened by the constant media coverage and the fact he's referred to as the GOAT more so than his actual name these days, as I just said before. But again, he's still a Super Bowl, so you can't deny that he's not the GOAT. You really can't. Like, I'm a f***ing Jets fan and I still admit it. Number 8, Conrad Dobler, St. Louis, Arizona Cardinals. The former standout offensive guard played for the Cardinals team from 1972 to 77. Good thing he played in the more relaxed era of football, because his antics and dirty play wouldn't work in today's NFL. He seemed to take pleasure in injuring other players. It's no wonder Sports Illustrated famously called him pro football's dirtiest player. He was also quoted saying, I'll do anything I can get away with to protect my quarterback. So you can see why so many people couldn't stand the guy. Number 7, Greg Hardy, Carolina Panthers. Hardy was supposed to be a franchise cornerstone for the Panthers. He led the team to an NFC South Division title in 2013, but it all came came crashing down quickly. In the 2014 offseason, Hardy was arrested for allegedly assaulting his ex-girlfriend. After playing one game for Carolina in 2014, he was deactivated and didn't play again that season. They moved on from him after the season, and the Dallas Cowboys signed him for the 2015 campaign. But in the midst of 2015, Deadspin released disturbing photos of the injuries Hardy's ex had suffered. That tarnished his image even more, and essentially ended any hope he had of continuing to play football in the NFL. Number 6, Lawrence Phillips, Los Angeles Rams. The Rams made a terrible decision to trade future Hall of Fame 
running back Jerome Bettis to the Pittsburgh Steelers in 96. The reason? The Rams wanted Nebraska running back Lawrence Phillips, even though the guy had plenty of troubles off the field. In 94, while in college, he was charged with attacking a student. A year later, Phillips viciously assaulted his ex-girlfriend, which led to a suspension. The Rams drafted Phillips anyway, but his troubled attitude was too much, and they moved on from him during the 97 season. Phillips continued his life of crime after football and was found dead in prison in January 2016. His death was ruled a suicide. Number 5, Jack Tatum, Oakland Raiders. One of the best safeties of the 70s, Tatum won a Super Bowl with the Raiders, and he was named to three Pro Bowls. But the late Raiders legend left behind a complicated legacy. He was an extremely dirty player who dished out plenty of vicious hits. An ugly collision with Patriots wide receiver Daryl Stingley in a 1978 preseason game left the latter paralyzed. Stingley wouldn't talk to Tatum again after the incident. Tatum defended his style of play, and some peers said he was misunderstood after his death. But as you know, many folks can't bring themselves to forgive him. Number four, Kellen Winslow II, Cleveland Browns. The elder Kellen Winslow is enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. His son, Kellen Winslow II, is among the biggest NFL busts in recent memory, as well as an all-time disgrace to the league. Winslow's big mouth and attitude made him somewhat unpopular during his time in Cleveland. But his sexual assault and rape allegations cemented his legacy as the most despised player in Browns history. Winslow pleaded guilty to rape charges in November 2019 and will likely be spending much of the remainder of his life behind bars. Number three, Michael Vick, Atlanta Falcons. He could have been one of the all-time greats. He could have been a Hall of Famer. He could have been one of the most beloved players in history. We all know it. We all wish it. He wasn't. But the guy set up a dogfighting ring in Surrey County, Virginia. Vick received a 23-month prison sentence. And aside from a strong 2010 season, the bulk of his career was ruined when he returned in 2009. Animal cruelty is inexcusable, and it's sickening. And Vick just couldn't help himself. He'll forever be one of the most disliked players in NFL history because of it. Number two, Bill Romanowski, Denver Broncos. Sure, the former Pro Bowl linebacker won four Super Bowls throughout his career, two with Denver and two with San Francisco. But this man was the dirtiest player in NFL history, and it's really not up for debate. He dished out an ugly headshot on Kerry Collins in a 1997 preseason game, and the latter suffered a broken jaw. Romanowski punched teammate Marcus Williams in the head during a practice, and the latter suffered a brain injury, an orbital bone fracture, and other facial injuries. Romanowski also threw a football in Brian Cox's crotch area. Simply not cool. Romanowski's enemies link his temper and pathetic antics to roid rage. Whatever the reason, this guy was a straight up jerk who should have been kicked out of the league at some point during his career. Number one, OJ Simpson, Buffalo Bills. The juice wasn't hated much during his football days, but he became public enemy number one long after his pro football career. Police responded to calls from his wife, Nicole, about committing domestic violence. There were multiple disturbing calls from Nicole about her husband abusing and terrorizing her as well. And in 1994, Simpson was arrested and charged for the murders of Nicole and her friend Ronald Goldman. DNA and circumstantial evidence, plus the infamous Bronco chase, pointed towards Simpson being guilty. Despite all that evidence, the jury still gave a non-guilty verdict, and Simpson was acquitted. However, he was deemed responsible for the double murder in a civil trial, and in 2007, Simpson was arrested for armed robbery in a Vegas hotel. He was sentenced to 33 years in prison one year later, but Simpson was granted parole in 2017. Obviously, it's hard for most people to like and respect Simpson after all of these heinous crimes he was accused and charged for. He went from being one of the greatest running backs in NFL history to being the most disliked player in league history. Who do you think are the top five most hated NFL players of all time? Join me in the comment section below. Make sure to follow myself and TPS on social media, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. We got it all. Go subscribe, go follow, go do the whole thing. Make sure to like this video. It really helps us out. It takes one click. Subscribe to TPS because we post videos every single day. Of course, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jason Biondo. I'll see you next time. My knee.